Welcome to Death Mechanics Guide, you undead bastards. In this video I'll try to explain stuff like dying, resurrection, rot and how to cure it. When you die in Sekiro two choices are given, resurrect or die. Die option gets you back at last used idol for a penalty to experience and gold. This penalty is 50%, meaning half of what you had at that point. It is permanent loss as there is no such mechanic that lets you get back to place where you had died to pick up lost experience and money. Important to know here is that experience bar cannot go down one level. It can reach zero experience for current level only. Let's say you have one skill point and very little experience. Upon death you will still have one skill point and only lose half of experience that was already present. If there was no experience then nothing is lost. Resurrection has some deeper mechanics to it. Upon resting at an idol one resurrection node is restored. Rest needs to be manually chosen for this to occur. Resting also respawns enemies. Node that is restored upon resting can only be restored via rest option, unlike other resurrections. For long portion of the game you will have one additional resurrection. This resurrection can only be used if black bar is not covering it. Black bar appears when you die, preventing multiple resurrections in quick succession. To remove black bar you need to kill enemies. When black bar is removed and second resurrection is used it will go on cooldown. To restore it you need to kill enemies again. This process can be sped up with Mibu Balloon of Soul consumable. There is also an item called Bundled Jizo Statue that instantly restores one resurrection. Later on number of resurrections can be increased by killing Lady Butterfly and Genichiro and then talking to Lord Kuro in Upper Tower and giving him Sakura Droplet. Upon dying multiple times rot spreads to NPCs, pausing any quest progression related to them. Rot cannot kill NPCs I believe, at least I haven't seen that. It randomly spreads to one or more NPCs at once. When this occurs for the first time you need to talk to Emma the physician at the dilapidated temple. She will ask for blood sample of afflicted victims. After that talk to any afflicted NPC, doesn't matter which one and ask for blood sample. Get back to Emma and give her blood sample. Now continue playing the game and very soon afterwards talk to Emma again. She will provide charm and blood. What this does is it cures rot, only that one time and enables dragon rot restoration option. To restore everyone afflicted by dragon rot you need dragon's blood droplet item. This can be bought from merchants and found in the world. So far I am not aware of any ways to farm this item, meaning it is limited. Also this item needs to be used after choosing dragon rot restoration to remove restoration and not in the inventory. Although many are mentioning that dragon blood droplet is limited item, meaning you can't have infinite amount of them, that is technically not true. Merchants restock dragon blood droplet after a while. I am not sure when, but they definitely restock it. When it's restocked it can be purchased for an increased price. Another mechanic tied to rot and dying is called unseen aid. This randomly appears and prevents loss of experience and gold upon death. Maximum chance is 30% but it gets lower depending on how many NPCs are afflicted with rot. More dying leads to more rot, more rot leads to less unseen aid chance. There are speculations that using resurrection instead of die option affects how fast rot will appear. This is not confirmed and I personally believe that it does not affect it in any way, but I might be wrong. If someone has different info do post in comments. Resurrection then has no downsides if that is correct and should be used all the time. That would be all. I hope this guide clears some things up. Thank you for watching and see you soon.